how could you possibly render that stream in a pleasing way? And of course, the best option to do that is always a long exposure. So if, if you uh, use a shutter speed of a couple of seconds, um, you're able to render that water, which was flowing quite fast in that, in that stream, in that river. Uh, you're, you're going to be able to render that water in a very creamy, soft, even foggy looking way, okay? The problem only was that I didn't have uh, a neutral density filter uh, with me at that time. Uh, and you'd need such a tool in order to get those shutter speeds up to a couple of seconds, maybe four, eight seconds, just to uh, remove any of the wrinkles, any of the details from the water. That was my goal when I was there. But what I did instead is knowing full well that I was going to want to have as the, the water as smooth as possible, I even took some more exposures. So after those initial um, exposure series, auto bracketing series, I took two bursts of exposures um, where I dialed in the longest possible shutter speed I was able to obtain under those lighting conditions and with the gear I had. And I, I uh, brought down the ISO to even below the native ISO of the camera, which was a Nikon uh, D500 in this case, um, to bring the shutter speed up uh, as much as possible or down as much as possible, so the longest shutter speed I could uh, manage to get. Um, and so I have a couple of uh, burst series here, all the same exposure. Um, and the goal was to put those into Photoshop and do a fake long exposure. Maybe you know that technique when you uh, put those images into Photoshop, you create a smart object and then you use the stacking mode uh, of uh, median or, or mean um, to just smooth out all those differences. And in that way, if you have enough exposures, you can actually create, even if you didn't have an ND filter at the time when you were taking the photos, you can create a long exposure effect, a fake one, so to speak. So that's what I was going for here, and that's why I took so many exposures. Overall, I think I've got uh, 42 exposures of that scene alone here. Now, I was playing with those in post-processing, and it turned out that uh, it was quite complicated to, uh, to assemble that, uh, that artificial long exposure in Photoshop uh, because I would um, lose the shadow details in the water. So if I, if I click on one of those um, darker exposures, you see that you've got uh, details here in those bright areas of the water. And if I click on any of those additional exposures that I've shot, you can see, oops, you can see that those areas are completely blown out. Okay, so I, I, it would have been a, a much more complicated task to merge those uh, in Photoshop. So I, I, so I ended up using another trick here, and that's what I'm going to show you. Is I'm going to go back to the, to the folder, to the collection where all the images are in. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom here and select all of them, okay? Select the first one, click on the first one, shift click on the last one. Now I have 42 images selected. That's all the images I've taken from that particular uh, spot with that particular framing, okay? What I'm doing right now is all of these images are still prepared, so the white balance is still the same, uh, chromatic aberration has been removed and all that stuff. And I'm just right clicking and saying export and Photomatics Pro, okay? The same um, dialog appears here, and again, I'm not going to tick any of these because I don't need them. And here in the uh, add suffix field, I'm going to say water so that I can tell those two uh, versions apart. Other than that, everything remains the same. I'm going to export all those images to Photomatics. Now, it's going to take a little bit longer for those images to be uh, loaded into Photomatics and then merged. Um, I'm going to, the, the thing that you probably want to avoid is to tick the align images checkbox when you have so many images, which is quite unusual, because if it starts trying to, an, to align those images, it's going to take very long, okay? And it may even fail because it's, it doesn't have enough memory or anything like that. I don't need that, 
So we're going to be fine, but it's still going to be uh, taking a little bit longer and I'm going to be back once Photomatix is finished. Lightroom has now finally finished exporting those files to Photomatix and Photomatix has finished loading them, merging them and presenting me with this uh, view of the tone mapping model and it has taken quite a lot of time because we have had 42 images to merge and prepare until that stage. Um, in the meantime Photomatix has asked me whether it's okay that multiple exposures have the same exposure value. I just clicked OK. I didn't care to correct anything. I just told Photomatix do whatever you can to merge those into an image and here we are with what Photomatix has created and you can see and we can see that a bit better if we when we compare those uh, images in Lightroom later on but the water is much smoother than for the first version that we created okay and that is the the whole purpose of this one and what I'm going for with the tone mapping now is to specifically um, adjust the water. The, all the rest of the image is going to go in, go away. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to blend the water of this version with the rest of the other image that we created before. So that's what I'm working to get a great look on the on the water. And the way I'm doing this is I'm doing I'm making this as smooth as possible. Okay, so I'm dialing down the con uh, the, the detail contrast um, to zero here and I'm probably going to uh, make the light lighting adjustments set the lighting adjustments to plus 10 because if I set them to a negative value I'm going to get all kinds of shadows and stuff in the uh, in the water here maybe I'm going to rethink that let's let's just see how the rest goes I'm probably going to do some funky things here that I wouldn't do for other images. For example, I'm going to dial down the strength of the adjustments here. And so what I'm trying to get here is a nice um, version of this image with the um, with the water perfect and the rest you can just forget about that. Okay, so I'm trying to rescue that part here where the the uh, far end of the water seems to be blown out. And dialing down the lighting adjustment just fixes that, I think. Let's see what the tone compression gives me. It brings some more details in that area back. And again, I'm just trying to concentrate on the water and to see what we can do to bring that out uh, the best. I'm going to probably raise the micro smoothing to its maximum value here. And then, last but not least, I want to bring in some more color into that part of the of the river here, the part where the the sky is reflected. And I'm doing this by raising the sh uh, the saturation of the highlights. Okay, so that looks just about right to me. I've dialed in some pretty extreme adjustments, but that was due to the fact that I was just concentrating on the on the water because in the next step we're going to merge or blend that water with the rest of the image in Photoshop. So for now, I think we're doing good with this version of the image. I'm just going to click Save and Re-Import. That's going to take a moment and I'm going to be back when Lightroom has both those versions, the prior one and this water version uh, inside its catalog so that we can continue with the next step of the workflow. So here we are with both those HDR images open in Lightroom, in Lightroom's catalog. And when I select both, and press the survey view button you can see the difference. So that's the base image here with uh, quite a lot of details in the water and that is the one that I've just merged and tone mapped for the water specifically. You can see it's much smoother, it's got that fake long exposure uh, effect that I was looking for originally when I uh, captured those images. <laughs> 